What in the hell is going on? Dave Allred, The Real Barman here from barpatrol.net and therealbarman.com. So today I'm going to give you some awesome tactics and strategies to reduce your labor costs because, of course, when we shave our costs, we increase profit, and profits is something that everyone needs. Okay, so let's not mess around. Let's jump right in. In this video, I'm not going to talk about what constitutes labor costs because it's more than just your hourly and salaried employees, and I'm not going to talk about how to track labor costs or calculate labor costs. All right, I talk about those in other videos and also in my online management course. Uh, so today we're just gonna talk about how to lower it. Okay, make sense? All right, here we go. Number one, you need to have an excellent training program because the better trained your staff is, the better and more efficient they're gonna be at their jobs. All right, if you don't create the expectations and the standards you demand from them, they're not gonna carry them out. All right, and this falls under systemizing and defining the roles and tasks for each team member so they aren't wandering around and distracted like you know, puppies chasing butterflies. All right, this means you need to create a training manual for each position of the business so it will run, like a, it will run smoothly and seamlessly. Got it? Okay, number two, determine how much staff you need on hand to service the number of guests in your restaurant. All right, this falls under both an art and a science trying to figure out how much staff you need on hand for each shift. So at the starting point, let's use this as a starting point. I like to determine what you'll need if you're at full capacity. In other words, if you're at full capacity, how many servers, bartenders, bussers, barbacks, hosts, and kitchen staff do you need to effectively serve your guests? All right, so let's say at full capacity, you determine that you need two hosts, seven servers, three bartenders, three bussers, two barbacks, and six in the kitchen. From there, determine what percentage of full capacity you're going to be on the other nights. All right, and the best way to do this is by tracking the number of covers each night, which is just another way of saying individuals. Okay, one cover equals, equals one person. And if your staff is ringing into the POS how many covers are at each table when they start a check, all right, you can easily track this. But the other way is to simply track your sales. And that's not a perfect science, but as a rule, the higher your sales, the busier you are. And at full capacity sales, they're usually going to look similar. All right, so you can look at your sales on the other nights to see what percentage of full capacity sales are at or what you're operating at on those nights. All right, so for example, on Wednesday nights, you might look and see that your sales are 50% of what they are normally at full capacity. So cut your staff in half. And 50% is obviously the easiest math example ever right here, but it at least gives you a place to start with. Now, you're also going to want to make sure that you're staggering when they come in and when you cut the floor. All right, you don't want five servers coming in at 4 o'clock to relieve the lunch crew because you're most likely going to be pretty slow during that time. All right, so maybe you bring in one at 4 o'clock, another one at 4.30, two more at 5 o'clock, and then the last one at 5.30, something like that. All right, and then you want to cut the same way in reverse order. By keeping your staff as lean as possible while still providing great service, you can maximize your labor productivity and reduce your labor costs. Number three, adopt the new customer service model by allowing customers to order and pay from their phones by scanning a QR code and having your menu show up right on their phones. Basically, you are putting the POS device right into their hands. All right, that's what their phone becomes. Now, GoTab is the leader in this technology. It's a free POS system that allows you to have fewer staff on while providing a better customer experience for your guests. All right, this is a system that has proven to increase sales by 30%, lower labor by 10 to 15%, increase table turnover, and increase, increase how much money you and your staff can make. All right, make sure to go check out GoTab so you can adopt this new customer service model that's changing the way bars and restaurants are running their businesses. You won't be sorry. All right, if we were prioritizing this list by most effective to least effective, this one would actually be at number one. All right, this has become the way to increase sales and reduce labor. But I just did these in random, in random order, so you know, deal with it. Okay, moving on. Number four, create a remarkable culture. And you're like, how in the hell does that save me money on, money on labor? Well, I'll tell you how. All right, the better your culture, the more your staff wants to work there. And the more your staff wants to work there, the less chance they have of leaving, which means less turnover, which means you don't have to spend thousands of dollars and loads of energy hiring and training new staff all the time. All right, by investing more in your staff, providing them incentives, and making your restaurant an amazing place to work, you will save a ton of money in the long run. All right, if you want to know more about how to create an amazing culture for your restaurant, I have a video coming out soon for that. In fact, when it's ready, I'll put it right here. And if nothing popped up just now, it means that it isn't ready. I'm sorry. Okay, last one, number five, train your employees to be hybrids. 
And by hybrids, I mean that one employee becomes capable of performing tasks for multiple positions. This not only creates more efficiency during the shifts, but it also makes it easier to schedule if you're short staffed. All right, for example, you might have a host that you can train to also be a busser. And that way, if you're short on bussers when doing the schedule, you can schedule that host to fill in for that shift. In addition though, while on as a host, he or she could also be helping out the bussers, busser on their duties if there's nothing to do up front and the bussers need some help. Does that make sense? All right, you also might have a server who knows how to bartend and during a busy shift, they can jump behind the bar and pour some beers and wine for the well. Anything to help out. This creates teamwork and also efficiency. By having hybrids, your options open up as far as what you're able to accomplish for scheduling and creating efficiency in your restaurant. All right, and then one more thing I just want to mention really quick is that you need to pay attention on a daily basis to clock in and clock outs because some employees will clock in early when they're not supposed to, or they will milk the clock at the end of the shift. All right, so you need to make sure that you're looking and you say, hey, you know, why was Bobby on until 10.15 last night when we cut him at 9 and he had no tables left? Then you can call Bobby in and let him know that this isn't okay. All right, when you have multiple employees milking the clock, it can add up to a lot of lost money and labor. All right, so that's sort of that's sort of like number six, a bonus strategy. Okay, so I hope this helped. This was a quick hitter today. Start putting these strategies into actual practice, and you're going to see the results. But if you do nothing, take no action, you're going to get no results. And then you'll go home and whine to your dog that nothing ever works out for you. All right, don't be that guy or girl. Make something happen. Okay, I appreciate you being here. I am going to see you next time. I'm out. <laughs>